Welcome to the Understanding Narcissist YouTube channel. This is going to be a fantastic topic. Now, I didn't say this was going to be a fantastic video, but I said it's going to be a fantastic topic. Um, and I'm feeling a lot better since you may know I was sick in the last round of videos. And I won't say that they were all, I thought they were bad, but I was not impressed when I started going through them, editing them to, to, lo to upload them to YouTube. I was a little bit, I guess, disappointed. I felt like I could have done better, and I was just loopy in some of those in some of those videos. But looking back, I think they're, I guess, they work and they're okay. One of the videos I wanted to do then, and I'm feeling much better by the way, so I'm hoping I can do this topic justice. And that topic is, narcissists are laughing at you. Now this is a subtle thing because. I guess I'll explain the basics of it. The basics of it being, if you want to really cause insecurity, self-doubt in someone, to set them up to being emotionally injured, just hypothetically, what's the best way to do that? Well, I can tell you one thing. The direct approach will not cause the most damage. If I just... If you just go after somebody and tell them they're stupid or they're ugly or they're not worth dirt or all that kind of thing, yeah, sure, that's not going to make them feel very good. But the range of responses and reactions that they that, that might uh, trigger in them and how it makes you look, as far as the whole dynamic goes, it's not very efficient if you're looking to cause harm. Now, there's probably all kinds of deep psychological, even neurological reasons as to why that's the case that I don't know of. But I do know that it's not going to work super well. And you'll notice, in general, narcissists don't employ it. I think they don't use it because it makes them look bad. But it's also because of whatever this barrier is, it's not as effective as, an, as undermining, creating that self-doubt within them without them knowing it. You know, when they reach that conclusion there's something wrong with them, when they reach that conclusion themselves, it's much more destructive and damaging than if somebody just says so. It's much more believable. Now, this is where it gets a little more complicated because, I'm, again, I'm not sure why it works so well, but the most effective way, really, to, to get that self-doubt, to get that, that kind of crippling fear instilled in them is to laugh at them, make them the butt of the joke, make them the idiotic... Um, you know, a victim of their own stupidity and how you don't even, you can't even, you don't even take them seriously because of how, how incompetent they are. And so that really boils down to laughing at them. And that is something that all narcissists do. They laugh at your incompetence like you're a moron, like you're a fool. And it works really well. And it works really well, too, because they don't do it that much. They don't do it overtly that much. They do it all the time. They basically look like you, look at you like, you know, you have no clue what you're doing. You're a total fool. If they weren't there, everything would collapse. And that you really are just a running gag for them, a running joke. And the, the amount of damage that does to your self-esteem is staggering. It's profound how destructive that kind of relationship they establish with you, the, the feedback you get from them. Like, you're, you are just the, the fool. You are just the jester there to entertain them. You know, they're kind of the eminent purveyors of whatever, of greatness and truth, and they're, they're correct, and you are the complete opposite. Now, obviously... Oh, I'm not going to say obviously I hate that word because it's not always true. It doesn't necessarily follow. But I think it's pro projected. That's what they fear the most. And, they, and they're able to kind of do that switch switching of positions with you. Make you the fool and not them, what they fear. And they do it via this mechanism that I've described. The relationship is always like you're just a humorous little aside for them. They don't take you seriously at all. Now, of course, the opposite is true you're a serious threat and they're dependent on you at the same time but let's just stick to the laughter part because 
the I've never seen any I've never seen or heard anybody else describe this. It is very important to the narcissist's psyche. I mean it's just a basic tool and it's a very effective one. It it, it I think too it illustrates it's kind of supposed to illustrate and implant in your mind the enormous gap between you and them. You know, the margin is so great as far as how much better they are than you. I mean, how, how and how bad it makes you feel when they laugh at you. That it kind of really, it's supposed to cement that concept that they are so great. It does not fathom, it's not fathomable how great they are. You know, you, you really don't, we don't even have the, the mental faculty uh, to really understand the depths of them and how, just how just how splendid, fantastic, and incredible they are. You know, nobody could really understand. That's just how great they are. I think it kind of helps with that. Obviously, there I go again. Not obviously. It's conceited. It's the, you know, on their high horse kind of thing. It's it To me, it's just an extreme form of arrogance and elitism and, to, to that, and, and, that, and that dependence on that, dis, I guess, discrepancy between you two. They want to highlight and and make really make you feel and live that um, difference between you and them so that you can make it real for them and they do that by causing the most pain as possible but you'll always feel it you will and sometimes they'll laugh at you out loud right there you're just an utter fool and if they're not doing that um, the real way they'll instill it is gosh it's so sophisticated I don't know how to describe it you always get the, I guess the best, the, where I should start is how, how you feel. You'll always feel it. That's the important thing. Um, you'll always know what's going on, in the, but the subtle ways that they are laughing at you, under their breath, like as I said, it can be out loud, but it's really in the interactions day to day. You will feel it day to day, and that's the most important thing. You will know they're doing it because you'll feel it now they'll try to illegitimize it they'll try to make it like oh whatever you're feeling could be anything because by the way if you've watched in my previous videos you're crazy too that's also going to be a thing so who knows what all kind of mental maelstrom is in your head and, and throwing and spitting things out and so since you're so unstable whatever you feel must be kooky and that includes the feeling that they're laughing at you but they are laughing at you and that's to keep that hold over you now it's important to note that naturally as narcissists, they'll never say it. They'll never hint at it. They'll never actually act like they're laughing at you, but they will have to laugh at you directly out loud um, on a pretty regular basis. They will have to let you know that that is how it is. So they always do it on occasion, just a straight, um, really, really direct, hey, I'm laughing at you because you're a fool kind of thing. They'll do it pretty regularly, pretty frequently, um, just to let you know, hey, I am laughing at you and because I, I think you're a total fool. And they have to let you know it and make sure to kind of reinvigorate that feeling in you to keep that, remember, those negative feelings kind of flooding, flooding through you because that's going to help them control you. Um, but yeah, I think, I think you'll find some useful application for this because it's very real. I have to say, I don't think I've ever, again, I've ne I don't think I've ever seen an exception to this rule. They're always doing it. It's always a, um, they, they're kind of the critic, the spectator, and you're the player. You're the one who's going to be doing things. They don't do anything for the most part, but they're able to grab the attention the fame for anything you're going to do and you get to take the fall for all the mistakes because there are going to be mistakes and that's just a, a natural that's a constant of life and something to accept but narcissists can't take that upon themselves because they're too weak to do so and so it has to be your problem but that that is the first thing I think that really helps establish, because um, you're going to feel it earlier on. 
you know, as early as possible, I need to establish that relationship of they are the superior, you are the fool who serves them because they're great. And they're the ones who are always doing and fixing everything and coming up with it right. Now, it's really, as I said, to shield them from the realities of the world so that you can bear the bad stuff they don't want to have to deal with because they aren't strong enough to and they can take the good. Anyway, I hope you like this video. Uh, like it. If you do, share it with somebody you think might benefit from it. Comment in the comment section below. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next episode. Bye.